Uh, let us then dive right into the matter of the conversation today, the agenda and presenters. So today's topic is going to be covered by uh, two people who, those of you who are clients of ours already know and um, spoke to them in person on many occasions. Those who are new again, uh, please do meet uh, Indre, our support uh, lead, and uh, Gleb Kovitz, um, our VP of Operations and Chief of Implementations here at Rigor. So today's topic is going to be uh, covered in following sequence. So we'll talk about what the tracking of equipment and rigor means. Uh, then we'll explain in detail what the statuses of the equipment imply. And then we'll talk about the different statuses that is pre-job and uh, rental job statuses. And closing it all out with a quick Q&A if you have any questions. However, I wanted to again point out that you can ask questions while we're talking about a specific item, just don't hold uh, down it, um, do submit it through the Q&A uh, button right at their control panel at the bottom, okay? So without further ado, let's keep going and start with the first part of the presentation. Go ahead, Gleb, thank you. Thank you very much, Nikolai. Good afternoon, everybody. Uh, my name is Gleb, um, and let me start this webinar about the rental equipment tracking uh, and specifically uh, understanding the status of the rental equipment in the rear system, what does it mean and how it works actually in your uh, database. So first let's start with a general uh, question. Why we know and what we know about rental equipment uh, that we're using in our rental operations in the oil field. So uh, there are multiple pieces of data that we can collect and we can analyze and then use it for the decision-making process and actually in the, in the course of the operations itself, uh, the information that helps us uh, to manage our equipment uh, effectively and, and uh, timely. So we are talking about the locations of the equipment because all the rental equipment in the oil field business is uh, delivered to the customer's location somewhere in the field, at the facilities, at the, uh, some kind of stations. So we need to precisely understand at what moment of time and where our equipment is located. We also can know, and sometimes it's the case when the company owns um, its own equipment, but also it can take equipment uh, from the third party providers, suppliers, and manage this fleet as well. So the ownership uh, is, is also useful to, to use in our database to understand to whom uh, this specific equipment belongs to. Uh, because sometimes it, it affects our uh, operations decisions, uh, what kind of equipment we need to use first for the client's jobs, or we need to store some, some equipment at our facilities and warehouses. Also, the condition of the equipment is one of the most important piece of information that we need to understand about the every specific asset, at what stage, at what state this asset is uh, right now. Utilization of the unit numbers and the rental equipment is also important to understand uh, for the uh, financial decisions and for the purchasing decisions. So which equipment performs better, which is utilized more and uh, which of these is utilized less. So the utilization is pretty important for the analysis of um, efficiency of the operations. So we can also track our maintenance cycles for every single asset. So what, when the maintenance should be performed for a specific asset, we can set up uh, different maintenance cycles depending on the type of the equipment, depending on the uh, frequency of the maintenance for a specific equipment. So everything can be set up in the rear system um, as well. Another point of information sometimes uh, that companies use is the warranties for the equipment. So how we, uh, how we communicate and how we interact with our vendors who provide us equipment and um, how we uh, manage the warranties of this equipment. Another uh, more of the technical side of the um, operations is the technical attributes tracking. So for every single asset, we can set up a, a technical parameters that can also can be tracked and even changed dynamically depending on the type of the job, depending on the type of the equipment that you provide, and uh, also depending on the uh, purpose of the job. And one of the most important and crucial, um, I would say, 
uh, point of information that is used in the rigor database is the status of the equipment. And that's what we're going to talk about today precisely, covering all the statuses that we have in rigor, what they mean, and how they can be used. So basically, um, right now we have around, but to be precise, we have 18 um, rental unit statuses. So the status of the rental unit is the particular state of the equipment as of given moment of time. Uh, say equipment is ready to rent, um, so it will have the applicable status or say it's deployed to the client location, so it will change the status. And you see that we have a color coded squares for each status in the system. So it's again, it's a little bit better uh, and, and more useful to understand the state of the equipment, the statuses of them. And uh, you are also able to filter the unit number statuses on the dashboards by specific status and color codes allows you to easily remember and just distinct uh, on the different statuses in the system. And we'll cover each of these statuses uh, during today's webinar. So please stay tuned. We have uh, general statuses and like we call it optional statuses. So the, the general statuses are applicable to most of the uh, configurations of the database because you probably may already know that we can configure the database to a specific requirements or specific business needs of the client. So, and depending on your requirements, we can turn off or turn on, enable some kind of additional modules or additional functionality in the system that will give you more statuses available to track in the system. But speaking of the general statuses, there are several of them. And one of the most used are ready to rent, deployed, uh, need repair, uh, and sold statuses because almost every company will will do the transactions that will reflect in these statuses. And as, as I said, depending on the configuration of your database, you may have optional statuses. So they are not necessarily to be enabled. You can use them or you cannot use them if you don't need them. So, but uh, again, we will cover these optional statuses also. So the rental unit status is a, as I already said, is a specific state of the equipment at a given moment of time. And you can consider, and we consider the flow of the statuses as a whole process of the equipment, or also this is the life cycle of a specific asset uh, throughout, the time, uh, throughout the, the time or the course of operations. So every single asset may change its status depending on the uh, type of job that is performed right now or depending on the state of that of, of this equipment um, either it's in the location uh, on, on the client side or it's in our internal storage and uh, on that uh, slide you can see one of the workflows that the rental unit can flow within and how the, uh, the statuses will be changed. As I said, you have a rental a unit availability dashboard, uh, which we'll cover a little bit later in, in details and how to access it. But generally speaking, it's all the unit numbers that you have in your system and all the statuses uh, as of specific uh, date and even time of the day. Because the important thing to understand about the rigor system is that it is very time sensitive. So every single document that you will generate in the system will have its own date and time. And uh, depending on the time and date, uh, the status will be different in the system. So say one hour ago, you can have a ready to rent status, but if you send this equipment to the location, it will change the status in, in one hour to deploy it, et cetera, et cetera. So, um, Please be, be careful about the timing of your documents. And in this way, you will better understand how your statuses are changed and what they are at specific uh, moment of time. Okay, now let's, let, me, let me explain how the statuses are changed. And uh, on the uh, specific scenarios in your rental operations, in your business, uh, I will show you how the statuses are changed. Uh, 
So let's cover first the purchases side of the business. When you just purchase the equipment, it's a new equipment, you just bring it in to the database. And um, if you've been using our system uh, for a while, you probably know already that every uh, equipment is the record in, this, in the system. It's like an object for the da database. So first we record this equipment to the data database and this asset gets the no status um, status actually. So it's still not available for the jobs. It's just a sitting and waiting for it to be purchased in the system. So when we purchase the equipment and we generate a bill of lading in, so when we bring equipment to our stocks, it gets the ready to rent status. So the status from no status to ready to rent is changed by the document, by a specific document, which is called bill of lading. Or in some cases, when you do your first or initial setup of the database, and we import all the data into your database, we use the initial balance document, which also brings the equipment to the ready to rent status and allocates it to a specific uh, location in your uh, warehouse or in your yards or different yards if you have them uh, all set up in the database. So the next uh, little bit more complicated scenario is when you purchase the assembled units. Uh, so the assembled units are those that uh, comprise different components. Uh, again, individual uh, serialized unit numbers. So you can build a assembly unit and then purchase it right away and bring it to the system. So instead of the uh, changing the status from no status to ready to rent, we first can change the status to for inspection because uh, assembled unit probably will require some kind of initial inspection before it can be uh, dispatched to the client's locations. So we, from the bill of lading uh, with a type assembly list, we can generate inspection card. When the unit falls this inspection and, and passes this inspection, uh, it then goes to the ready to rent status. Okay, another scenario when we have our unit numbers already uh, set up in the system and they have ready to rent status and we decided that we need to build an assembly unit. So in this case, every single component of the assembly unit will have its own status as assembled. So when it's built to the assembly, all the units will be assembled. But if we decide to disassemble the unit, we can perform this action too. And then all the, all the components will move from the assembled status to the ready to rent status back. So it's, it's ready to be assembled again. Okay, now let me cover another type of scenarios or, or operations that you may have in your business, which is the subrental. So when you take uh, equipment uh, for a specific period of time, say for a specific job or for, for the next six months to use in your rental fleet. Uh, and you take this equipment uh, from, from third party provider. In this case, again, the unit number may have a no status at the initial stage, but then when you generate a sub rental ticket in, so you, instead of bill of lading, you, you just take it from the vendor and subrental ticket in will change the status of the unit to ready to rent. And again, when you give this equipment back to the vendor, so you don't need this anymore, any longer, you generate subrental ticket out and the unit again um, goes to the no status state or, or status, and you will now be able to use it uh, in your rental operations. Okay, uh, we've covered the pre-job, pre-rental job statuses and, and types of operations. Now let's talk about the specific rental job operations and uh, how the statuses are uh, worked out in these uh, types of operations. So I would start first with rental units reservation uh, type of uh, activities. So the rental unit reservation type of activity in the rigor system is considered is when you, uh, when you want to reserve some assets 
for the next jobs or for the following jobs. Say you got a call from the client and they say that we are going to have a job maybe in two weeks or in a month, but you know that we, they will require specific assets. So you can reserve these assets in your system, just not to be dispatched to the other client or to the other job. So you basically reserve it, an equipment for a specific client, for a specific job. And in this case, you will use the reservation note document that will change the unit number status from ready to rent to reserved. And once this unit is reserved, it won't be able to, it won't be used for other jobs, right? Then when the job starts, you generate rental ticket delivery and the equipment goes to the wrecked status first, maybe, again, that's an optional status, or right away to the deployed status if it's deployed and started working on the location and generating revenue. But in case if you reserve the equipment and the client, de the client declined the job or declined the request, then you can definitely unreserve the equipment and bring it back to the ready to rent status, which will be done through the uh, reservation note document again. Now, um, let me pass the mic to Indre, our uh, user support lead, and she will cover the equipment delivery um, workflow. Thank you, Gleb. Hello, everyone. So let's talk about equipment delivery and how it triggers un uh, unit number status change in Brigger. So for example, you have a unit which is available for the job. It's, it's in status ready to rent. And when you generate a rental ticket type delivery and you set up the date and time of this ticket and you add the equipment and specific unit number what you are ready to deliver to the job and when you post in regard this document based on that time and date of this document the unit status is changed from ready to rent to deploy it uh, in other cases it may be that you are delivering the equipment to client's location, but the rental period, the job actually starts after a day of two days. In this case, you are able, you have an option to select a, a ticket date when the equipment will be delivered. And there's a secondary date on each item line for each equipment in the ticket where you can set the date when the start job, so that means when uh, equipment is moved from ready to rent to racked. So the racked status means that equipment is on client's location, but the rental period did not start yet, uh, hasn't start yet. And then the item line date means when the equipment is moved to status deployed and the rental period starts. It's important to mention that every single uh, status of unit number in trigger is triggered. The change of status is triggered only by document. That means there is no possibility to change it manually and only posting uh, particular document, generating particular documents in rigor triggers the status change for each of uh, unit number from your inventory. So now let's watch a short uh, demo by Lab how it actually works in rigor database and how the statuses are changing there. Okay, now let's take a look how the rental unit status is changed in the system once you're operating the database and generating new documents. So now let's let's assume that we have a new job and we set, set up the rental service agreement and we add the generator to this job. And we also can specify that the delivery date of this uh, equipment will be on March 1st, but we are gonna start charging the client uh, with the use of this equipment as of March Second, so one day delay, but the equipment will be at location as of March March first. Now, when the dispatcher generates a rental ticket delivery, he specifies that the uh, equipment will be delivered on March first at ten seventeen, and then uh, we also have March second as the deployed date, meaning that the rental uh, charge period will be starting start from the March second. Now, when the rental ticket is posted and make it made active 
and we see the green check mark on the on the document it means that from that moment from that time the equipment is moved from our shop to the client's location and the status of the equipment is changed also now let's take a look how the statuses have been changed we go to the availability dashboard and we can uh, filter our dashboard by the specific uh, type of equipment and now we see here is our unit so as of february 28 this unit number or this asset was in the ready to rent status but since we've generated the rental ticket as of march 1st the equipment has changed its status to the erect because we just keep it on the location it's still not generating a revenue for for us so we call this status as wrecked at location and remember that in the rental ticket the rental period charge started from the uh, march 2nd so if i'll select the march 2nd date i'll see that my unit has a deployed status as of this moment of time and also i can select even time of the day to double check the status of the equipment so that's how the statuses are changed in the rigor system all right now let's take a look at the equipment backup operations so what is the backup in the in the rigor system uh, and how we understand these operations is when you can reserve a specific unit number uh, for the for the equipment that is already in the job so for example when you do swaps of the equipment and you know that after a certain period of time or a couple of days or even uh, circling hours the equipment should be swapped with another unit you can back up and you can reserve the unit on your location on your shop to be replaced then uh, with with the working equipment and again we have a specific document which is the backup node which can hold the equipment uh, in the system until it gets replaced with with the working unit or swapped at, at the location so from ready to rent status you tr you trigger the backup status by the backup node uh, with a type reserve and then when you switch the equipment or swap the equipment at the location you generate the rental ticket service and this unit number changes the status from backup to deployed and the same happens if you need to unreserve the backup you just uh, generate another backup node and unreserve the unit so it goes back to the ready to rent status okay so the next uh, procedure when the status of equipment is changing is equipment return after the job so what's happening there so when the job is done and the equipment is ready to be returned to your warehouse or your shop so before the when the equipment was working it was in status deployed and when you are returning equipment you are generating a rental ticket return adding this equipment and on posting it there is a few options so the first one it depends on what configuration you have on, in rigor so if you have enabled inspection module after the posting the return ticket all the equipment uh, which required the inspection gets generated an inspection card and this equipment is moved to the status for inspection so that means they you need to finish to run uh, the inspection card to finish the inspection uh, to be able to move this equipment to ready to run status for the next job uh, there is an option if uh, inspection module is not enabled so after the return equipment can be moved directly to the status ready to run for the next job uh, sometimes it's happening that um, when the job is proceeding on the client's location the equipment may be damaged or lost in this situation we have a solution in rigor too so you can mark equipment condition as lost or uh, damaged and then in this case uh, you have an option to select if you want to uh, solve the equipment to the client so on the rental ticket when you select equipment as damaged and lost or uh, and you want to solve it the statuses will change uh, from uh, deployed to sold and this equipment will be removed from your active inventory from rigor database 
Same if the equipment was lost, you can charge the client for the expenses for your equipment. And uh, in this case, the equipment will get status lost and will be uh, removed from your rigor inventory too and won't be any uh, available for the next job to select in the next job for the clients. So next type of operations that you may have, <clears throat> sorry, is equipment disposal. When, when you understand that the equipment is not anymore ready for the job or it's not just workable, uh, you can dispose the equipment and remove it from the rental fleet, from the available rental fleet. So in this case, you can move the equipment to the disposal status right away from the ready to rent status. Uh, by generating an item disposal document. Um, or sometimes if the equipment has been moved to the out of fleet status and were, was sitting in this status for a while, and then you understand that still we need to just dispose it, we, we will not no longer move, uh, use this equipment. Again, you just uh, move it to the a scrap status uh, by the item disposal document and uh, this equipment will not be available uh, for jobs. Okay, and the next uh, procedure is the repairs. So when you are returning equipment from the client's location and uh, you, uh, the status of unit number is changed from deployed to inspection, you're running to check, you're checking the equipment, is everything working correctly, if it requires any maintenance or any repair. And if you notice that equipment is damaged or broken and it requires some repair, you are able to, to, to set the result of the inspection as need repair and generate an inspection uh, and repair card. When you are generating a repair card, it triggers the unit number status change from for inspection to need repair. And it stays in the status until the equipment is fully repaired and the repair card is finished. And you set the repair date when the repair was done and from what date and time the unit is, uh, the unit is moved to active inventory and it's ready for rent for the next job in rigor database yes uh, equipment sales is one of the types of operations that you may have in your uh, rental um, business and some companies use uh, sales module of the rigor system is uh, more frequently like uh, the sales operations are pretty common uh, in in their business but sometimes if you if you are just uh, using the rental module of the rigger, but again, after the job, you decide that you, you need to sell the equipment to the client, you can generate uh, these documents. Or in case of the direct sales of the equipment, uh, you can have a sales shipment document, which changes the unit number status from ready to rent to sold. Or if you sell the equipment out of, uh, from the out of lead status, again, it will be moved to the sold status by the sales shipment document. And another uh, type of transactions that uh, in most cases, frack and flow back companies uh, use and, and uh, operate in the, is the rework uh, transaction. When you need to send your equipment for the external uh, maintenance shop and uh, the equipment will be reworked to some extent. So in this type of uh, transaction, uh, you, will, you will first have the need repair status for the unit number. If you cannot internally repair this unit or re re rework this unit, then you will send it to the uh, mechanical shop. And the unit number status will be changed to the for rework first, by the repair card document. And then when the equipment is physically shipped to the mechanical shop, you will have a rework bill of lading out document, which marks the unit number status as rework. And then when the equipment gets returned to the shop, the rework bill of lading in document is generated and the unit number gets the ready to rent status. So again, that just allows you to understand the current state of the equipment at any given moment of time 
and also it gives you an ability to see the history of every single serialized item to see how many days it was out of lead or how many days it was in the rework status or how many days we we spent on the repair of the unit so by 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 performing these transactions and these documents you you can precisely track all the statuses of the equipment now let's take a look at how you can track statuses. So we've learned how we change the statuses in the documents and in the system by generating documents, but also it is important for the dispatchers, for the asset managers to see the whole picture of the rental fleet statuses and to analyze uh, these statuses uh, effectively. So Indra, please. Thank you, Gleb. So as you already understand that uh, it's really important to know uh, at the point of time where, is, where your equipment is located and at what status, what condition is. And Rigger has a few uh, reports and dashboards where you can find this information, analyze and check what's happening with your equipment at, at a particular time and date. So one of the dashboard is availability dashboard and uh, another report, what I would suggest to use to track your equipment is rental unit history report. Of course, another one new, brand new uh, functionality, what we can offer for our clients is barcoding scanning. So let's move further and let's see how uh, it's working in rigor. And let's watch uh, a short demo how availability dashboard and rental unit history dashboard uh, works, where you can find it and what information you can see there. Let me show you where you can find unit number statuses in Riga. So the first location where you can find it is availability dashboard. You can find it under quick menu and by selecting availability dashboard, you can select a different options. But if you select unit numbers, you will get a list of the all unit numbers what you have in Riga inventory. And here you can see the current status for particular date and time uh, a current status of each unit number. You can use some filters to filter the data and select just particular equipment or unit number and to see where it is location, located and what status, what the current status it is. Uh, of course, you can go back by the date and time and see how the status is achieved, where it was uh, on particular date and time. Another place where you can find uh, rental unit statuses is rental unit history report. So if you go to all field rentals, select the all field operations reports, you will get the full list of all reports in rigor. And here on the first column, you can see rental unit statuses and location. So in this report, you can use the filters or you can just generate the report and it will represent all unit numbers, all equipment, in rigor inventory with current statuses, locations, if it's deployed, if it's in need repair status, and so on. Uh, also in this report, you can select in the filter a particular status and it will show you uh, the unit numbers which are in that status at the selected date. So this is really helpful report when you need to find where is your equipment at the moment and at what status it Yes, as I mentioned before, we have another functionality how you can find uh, what status is for the equipment. So it's bar scanning. Rigger has a mobile ER ERP client. So when you have it on your device, you can just scan the equipment and uh, see all the information about it. So let's see how it works. So when you have opened uh, the mobile ERP client, you just go to unit numbers on the menu, and then you select the search by barcode. And then easily with your camera, you can scan the barcode from your equipment, uh, 
and it right away opened the unit card of equipment where you can see the current status and the previous status of that particular unit number. If you go to the main tab, you can see all the additional information like module, owner, and so on. In another tab, there are more information. So if you have a maintenance module enabled in your database, you can see all the details about the maintenance drivers, maintenance procedures, uh, of course, about the repairs, a home department, and attributes for the particular unit number. So it's really helpful and quick uh, search to see the current statuses and uh, other information about the unit numbers in rigor database. Yes, exactly. I, I would agree with the intro that the barcode scanning is very useful and a uh, good tool to automate your asset tracking. Uh, so you can easily find any unit number in the system by just quickly scanning the barcode on it. So if you if you want to use these uh, capabilities and this functionality in the rigor system, just let us know and reach out to us and uh, tell that we'd like to utilize this tool because it's not enabled by default in every single configuration, but we can definitely enable for your configuration if you have these barcode, uh, barcodes on your equipment. And again, if you are new to rigor, uh, please do uh, be sure to check our website if you haven't done that. And if you have, keep going uh, to the website, learning about us. If you um, still, because there's a lot of information on the website, and whenever you're ready, uh, click book a demo button on the website and uh, we'll get a notification with your details and we'll reach out and schedule an in-person uh, demo for you to show you how Rigor works in um, real life. All right. So on that note, I wanted to again, thank you everyone. Thank you to our presenters today and all of our participants. It's been very insight insightful, we believe. So let us know if you have any questions over email or through the website. We'll be more than happy to answer them. We can always, always be reached uh, by phone as well. Thank you very much, thank you very much Nikolai, for, for having us here. And thank you, everybody, for attending this webinar. We'll talk to you next week. Thank you. Goodbye. Thank you. Good yeah, night. have a great day. Bye.